Hello dear learners, parents, and home tutors. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this video, we will talk about the first topic for quarter two, which is all about the history of measurement. Let's begin this lesson with this activity. Determine the dimension of your dining table at home using only the parts of your arms. Take note, you use the parts of your arms. And indicate the appropriate part of the arm used in measuring. You can do this with your parents or home tutors or siblings. I'll give you one minute. Timer starts now. Time is up. Let's now answer the following questions. Based on the previous activity, we will now answer the following questions. Number one, how was your experience with the previous activity? Do you, do you find it hard? Did, uh, did you enjoy it or what? I hope you enjoyed it. Number two, did you find it hard to do actual measurement? Number three, were there any differences in your data and your other family members' data? I want you to uh, compare your data with the data of your any of your family member. Now, I want you to look at if there is a difference of your data and the data of your family member. If there is, then what do you think is the cause of those differences? These questions will be answered in this video tutorial. The development of measurement. For phase one, this is the primitive measurement or the system of measurement during the ancient times. One of the earliest inventions of human beings was the unit of measurement. In ancient times, people needed measurement to determine how long or why things are. They need to measure things to build their houses or make their clothes. Later, units of measurement were used in trade and commerce. In the 3rd century BC in Egypt, People use their body parts to determine the measurements of things. The same body parts that you use in measuring your dining table based on your previous activity. So some of the body parts that were used by the Egyptians are the following. First, the cubit. The cubit is also known as the forearm length. It is the distance from the point of the elbow to the tip of the middle finger. Next is the span or this is also known as the hand span. For it is the distance from the end of the thumb to the end or to the tip of the little finger.
Another body parts that is used during the ancient times are the palm and the digit. The palm is the width of the fingers without the thumb. So it's the width of the fingers excluding the thumb. Well, the digit is the width of the index finger. So this is now the digit. The palm is considered as one-sixth of the cubit. So during the ancient times, or according to the Egyptians. So that comprises the phase one of the primitive measurement. However, using body parts in measuring had a disadvantage. Not everyone had the same forearm length, right? Discrepancies arose when people started comparing their measurements to one another because measurements of the same thing differed depending on who was measuring it. Because of this, these units of measurement are called non-standard units of measurement, which later then evolved into what is now known as the inch, the foot, the yard, which are known as the basic units for the English system. Phase 3, the metric system of measurement. The English system of measurement was widely used until 1800s and 1900s when the metric system of measurement started to gain ground and became the most used system of measurement worldwide. This system of measurement was first discovered by a Belgian mathematician and his name is Simon Steven. In his book or in his booklet The Arts of Tents. And this was proposed by the by the English philosopher John Wilkins the metric system of measurement was first adopted in France in the year 1799. And these are the three units. For length, that's meter. For mass, that's kilogram. And for time, that is second. Phase 4, the International System of Units, RSI. In 1875, the General Conference on Weights and Measures was tasked to define the different measurements. By 1960, CGPM released the International System of Units, or SI, which is now being used by majority of the countries, with the biggest exception being the United States of America. Here is now the units for length, that's meter, for mass, kilogram, for time, seconds, for electric current, that's ampere, for temperature, that's Kelvin, to measure luminous intensity of light, it's candela, then for to measure the amount of chemical substance that's moon. For energy, the unit is joule. For power, the unit is watt. Then for temperature, it's in degrees Celsius. Electric charge, column, angle, radian, frequency, hertz. This is now the summary of the development of measurements. First is the phase one, which is the primitive measurement. This is the system of measurement used during the ancient times. In the third century BC in Egypt, people used their body parts to determine the measurement of things. However, using the body parts had a disadvantage. Not everyone had the same forearm length. Discrepancies arose when the people started comparing their measurements 
to one another because measurements of the same thing differ depending on who was measuring it. Because of this, these units of measurements are called non-standard units of measurement which later on evolved into what is now known as the inch, the foot, and the yard. These are the basic units of, of units of length in the English system of measurements. So from primitive measurement, it evolves into English system of measurement. Then after, the English system of measurement was widely used until 1800s and 1900s when the metric system of measurement started to gain ground and became the most used system of measurement worldwide because the met uh, units of metric system are easier to convert because this is uh, based on the booklet founded by the Belgian mathematician Simon Steven, which is the Lithiende or the Arts of Dance. This was proposed by the English philosopher John Wilkins and the metric system of measurement was first adopted in France in 1799. And in 1875, the General Conference on Weights and Measurements was tasked to define different measurements. And by 1960, CGPM released the International System of Units, which is now being used by majority of the countries. Since the Philippines used to be a colony of the United States, Earlier Filipinos were taught in the use of English instead of metric system of measurement. Thus, they preferred English system rather than the metric system, although Philippines have already adopted the metric system as its official system of measurement. Thank you so much everyone for watching. I hope you learned a lot.